In our previous lesson, you have seen how to describe directions using compass bearing. So in today's tutorial, we are going to be talking about the representation of true bearing. If you could recall, I told you we have two types of bearing, the compass bearing and the true bearing, which is sometimes referred to as three digit bearing. This bearing is a real life situation, remember? So I would like you to pay attention throughout in this chapter and I promise you will have no problem with bearings. Before we start, there are some key features of this true bearing that I would like you to understand. Number one, all angles are measured from the knot. All angles are measured from the knot, unlike in compass bearing that we either measure them from the knot or from the south. But in true bearing, they are only restricted to this knot direction. And in clockwise direction, clockwise direction, in compass bearing, we sometimes measure them from uh, north to west, which is anti-clockwise. But in true bearing, it must be clockwise. This is an important feature. Number two, all angles are written in three digits. Suppose you have 70 degrees. In true bearing, we don't write 70 degrees as this. Rather, we add zero before 70. So any angle that is less than 100, 99, 67, 50, and so on, even if it is zero, you have to write zero, zero, zero degrees. It must be in three digits. This is future number two. And the last one, which is also very much significant, the bearing of A from B is never the same as the bearing of B from A. And this word here is very important from, you can see it here. I will illustrate this in just a moment. This word from phase five where exactly the angle is measured. So the bearing of A from B, it means that it is that angle which is measured from B leading to the direction of A. So let us illustrate all these three information. <clears throat> let us illustrate this information. The bearing of A from B is 65 degrees. Remember number one we said every angle is measured from the north and it must be clockwise, if you could recall. All angles are written in three digits. You can see one, two, three, this is three digits. And I told you this word here is very important from. It specifies exactly where the angle is measured from. So since the bearing of A from B is 65 degrees, we are going to measure that 65 degrees from B. So the first point we need to plot is this B. So suppose this point here is B. Every point has this north pole, which is upright. So if this is horizontal plane, this north pole will form an angle of 90 degrees. So it must be upright. From, meaning we are going to plot angle 65 degrees from here leading to direction of A. So we measure it from the north. So if this is point B, this is the line of our north pole. You use your protractor or use a freehand sketch to measure 65 degrees. Suppose this is 65 degrees from here. You know, uh, two lines form an angle. So this line is the line leading to A. Suppose it stops here. We have to say this is our point A. And every point has that north pole, which is upright. Our angle is 65 degrees. You have to add zero behind. So we have just illustrated this information here. The bearing of A, this is A, 
from B. It means the angle is measured from, from B to A. But this angle, you must add an arrow hitting the line leading to A to show you this is where the angle stops. I told you the bearing of A from B is entirely different from the bearing of B from A. So how can we find the bearing of uh, B from A if this is the bearing of A from B? That word which is very important will always guide you. You have to measure that angle from the knot clockwise. So you must follow this direction, not otherwise. And to find the bearing of B from A, you have to measure this angle from the knot. You keep on going till you hit that line leading to B. You attach an arrow here. Remember in our introduction, I told you, you have to be familiar with geometry and trigonometry. In plane geometry, remember this angle here. If you add it to this angle, you must get 180 degrees because these lines are parallel. These knot poles are parallel. If you have parallel lines, it means those lines will never meet. Any line that cuts them here, this angle plus this angle, if this is A, this is B, A plus B must be equal to 180 degrees. But I don't want us to follow that direction. Remember, I can have my south pole here using dot. It is straight line from the north to south. This is south. This internal angle here is the same thing as 65. Okay, this time around we can use 65 degrees. If the angle is not given from the question, maybe you are the one that introduced the angle, you don't need to add that zero behind. This angle and this angle are exactly the same. We call them an alternate angles. So if this is B, this angle here must be equal to B. We call them alternate angles. They are always equal to one another. If you have two parallel lines, and a line cuts them through, the angle here and the angle here are said to be alternate to one another, and they are always equal. So this angle and this angle are equal because these lines are parallel, and this is the line that cuts them through. Okay, Ang angle on a straight line is 180, so it means this angle here is 180 degrees. So the combination of this 180 degrees and this 65 degrees will give us the bearing of B from A. Because to find the bearing of B from A, you have to calculate the total angle from the knot. Moving, moving, moving onward till it hits that line that leads to B. So the bearing, you write it, the bearing of B from, this word is very important, from A, it means the angle is measured from A, is equal to 180 degrees plus 65 degrees, which is equal to 245 degrees. It means that the bearing of B from A is equal to 245. And this is not the only way you can find this 245 degrees. Let me show you another way. Remember I told you this angle and this angle are supplementary, meaning if you add them together, you're going to get uh, 180. So this angle will be definitely 180 minus 65, which is going to be 115 degrees. Remember this angle at the back is what we are looking for. This is our A, point A. 
So the bearing of B from A is this angle from the knot moving clockwise till it hits the line that leads to B. But having obtained this angle, which is 115 degrees, we know that angle at the center is 360 degrees. So to obtain this angle at the back, we can subtract this from 360 degrees. So we can say that the bearing of B from A is the same thing as 360 degrees, which is an angle at the center, minus this 115 degrees. And you shall obtain the same thing. Let us confirm it. 360 minus 115 is equal to 245 degrees. So what is the relationship between, let me write this angle here, 245 degrees. So what is the relationship between this bearing and this other bearing? If you look at this angle, it is going forward while this one is coming backward. So this angle that is going forward is known as four bearing while this one is coming backward we call it as back bearing sometimes they do ask some questions like this this is for bearing while this one is back bearing so this is just the introduction to uh, true bearing Subsequently, we are going to solve so many problems under this true bearing. Thank you for watching. Do have a nice day.